Welcome, thank you for clicking on the video. Today we're gonna have a crash course in solar panels. <laughs> Why not? Let's shake things up a little bit. But what do solar panels have to do with anything that this video is about? The title poses the question, how important is the photosynthesis of orchid roots to their general well-being and that of the overall health of the orchid? Well, I hope you stick around because we're going to have ourselves a little geek moment and cover a whole different approach to orchid roots to synthesizing and for that reason do they need to be exposed to light etc etc which I find is overrated for the most part. Anyway let me explain. First and foremost, let me get the idea that orchids need to be potted up in clear pots out of the way, right out of the gate. They do not. Let me qualify that. We are addressing epiphytic orchids, which would grow best on mounts, but as we are not all able to grow our orchids mounted based on where we live, we pot epiphytic orchids up. Terrestrial and semi-terrestrial orchids do not factor in when it comes to roots that have the capability of photosynthesizing, so we're just going to exclude those from this conversation altogether. There are several reasons that clear pots are an advantage and serve a purpose. One of them is we benefit from peace of mind because we are able to monitor moisture levels and we love to see the root tips do their thing within the media. Basically clear pots are more for our benefit as growers and not because the roots need light to photosynthesize. They can, they will, but it is such a tiny fraction that when the clear pot is in a sleeve, a cache, or covered in any other way, then a clear pot is obsolete because the roots would be without light anyway. Now let me explain why there is no need to focus on orchid roots photosynthesizing by using the analogy of solar panels and pair them with the process of photosynthesis happening within the surface area of our orchid leaves. See what I did there? I hope that with this comparison analogy, it will be easy to understand why focusing on the concept of orchid roots need light to photosynthesize is unnecessary. But of course, I have a few exceptions to that statement in itself. Give me a moment. I mean, we are after all talking about growing orchids and uh, no single topic is without exceptions. This being another one of those. So. First off, solar panels are there for energy harvesting. They act like power stations. They capture the sunlight using photovoltaic cells made of silicon. Pair that thought with photosynthesis through the leaves for plants which are like nature's solar panels. Their leaves are like solar cells capturing sunlight through the process we know as photosynthesis. Just like silicon is crucial for solar panels, plants have chlorophyll, the green pigment that absorbs sunlight and works like the powerhouse. Plants absorb the carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil, which is similar to sunlight hitting the solar panels. Just like the solar panels excite electrons, which in turn generate an electricity current, the leaves convert energy through the magic of photosynthesis. Plants convert sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water into glucose, a form of sugar which stores chemical energy. As a byproduct, plants release oxygen into the air during photosynthesis, much like solar panels produce electricity as a byproduct of capturing sunlight. This electricity is ready to power everything in your house, as does the stored energy in the form of glucose, which fuels the plant's growth, allowing it to thrive and serve as a source of food and oxygen. So in essence, both solar panels and photosynthesis harness the sun's energy, but in different ways. One through cutting edge technology and the other through the incredible sophistication of nature. Now that we've had a crash course in how solar panels work, what has all that got to do with the supposed importance of roots being able to photosynthesize and for that reason they need light to do so? Well, it is about surface area. If you consider the surface area that solar panels cover in order to provide electricity to a home, they lay out nice and flat, usually with the optimal orientation toward the major light source. What kind of surface area do orchid roots have in comparison, even if they're on a mount? Next to none by comparison. You can see how the surface area of the flat solar panel's size and subsequent efficiency overrides everything and that is why they are installed in the form of panels 
as opposed to round, thin tubes, pillars, or columns, which is what the shape of our orchid roots are. Keep in mind we're comparing here solar panels, leaves, roots, shape, size, orientation, and surface area. So the same efficiency comes in the form of the leaves of our orchids. They are the solar panels, and basically the roots are irrelevant when it comes to the efficiency of photosynthesizing to support the health and well-being of our orchids because of the tiny surface area that roots have as opposed to the leaves of our orchids which are exposed to the light and doing all the heavy lifting when it comes to photosynthesis. The fraction of photosynthesis provided by orchid roots in a clear pot even on mounts is so minimal it does not contribute much to the overall photosynthesis support for our orchids. Take that one step further and know that media covers a big portion of the orchid roots. That is where the velamen is white, not green, because no light reached that part of the root. And on a mount, only half the root is actually exposed to any form of light because of the way the root flattens out as it attaches itself to the mount. Can we take that one step further even? If you're not quite convinced, then think about how algae blocks light. Many established roots are covered in algae. They are old, but still very viable. However, the velamen is covered in algae, which blocks out the light so that part of the root does not photosynthesize at all. In those cases, you still do not see the orchid struggling because the roots are covered in algae. Not even orchids with Tourette leaves, thin pine needle leaves like that. You would think that the photosynthesis coming from the roots is vital to the health and well-being of orchids like that, but that is not the case. You could cover all the roots, give them no access to light, and all would be just fine because in most orchids, net photosynthesis the difference between the total photosynthesized energy and loss of photosynthesized energy through respiration and death of plant parts, net photosynthesis occurs through leaves. In these cases, the green or red tipped aerial roots will perform just the amount of photosynthesis necessary for maintaining basic physiological functions. So, if maintaining the photosynthetic function of orchid roots is not one of the major considerations when it comes to potting up epiphytic orchids, then what is the role of the actual presence of chlorophyll in orchid roots? Why is it there in the first place? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Seeing as orchids have adapted to various environments and the presence of chlorophyll in their roots reflects their ability to utilize available light for energy production, this adaptation is especially valuable in habitats where sunlight may be limited, which in our private collections is usually not the case because we have sunlight or supplemental light to compensate for what could be months of overcast days out in nature where the roots do help out to bridge the gap for the orchid to make it through the stressful conditions. But usually, even that is minute, because in those instances, the orchid would be in a state of rest. Maybe dormancy, maybe it has leaves, maybe it has no leaves. But usually, when there are low light levels and there are stressful conditions, an orchid out in nature goes into a form of rest and we are back to the roots exposed to the air will perform just the amount of photosynthesis necessary for maintaining basic physiological functions. However, in culture, what we do have, and this is where our famous exceptions come into play, again, we're dealing with orchids after all. Anyway, in our cultures, we come across the most annoying reality of orchids going into rescue mode or arriving in a weakened state from an order that was placed. Whatever the scenario may be, a weakened orchid needs all the help it can get and well, this is where the photosynthesis function of the roots can come in very handy because every little helps when it comes to our attempts at rescuing orchids. If there are any roots, then they will help with the, fingers crossed, recovery of the orchid and for that reason it is usually best to pot up rescues in a light airy mix in clear pots allowing for airflow and light to reach the roots which will help support the orchid that is in dire straits. There are never any guarantees that the fraction of photosynthesis is going to support the orchid to recover. Many components have to fall into place for a rescue mission to be successful, but in situations like that, we can certainly take advantage of what amounts of photosynthesis comes from the roots and hope to revive our orchid with that added little bit of support. And the best exception to the rule of roots not being that important of a contributor for the function of photosynthesis 
is when it comes to the genera that have next to no structures or just tiny structures that are deciduous as well. In the example of the Teniophyllum genus, which include genera like Chylochistas, Mycocoelias, and Dendrophylax. These orchids are adapted in such a way that they absolutely 100% depend on the roots doing all the photosynthesis in order to provide the plants with the necessary energy vital for their survival. But there is a difference here. The photosynthetic efficiency of the roots of a leafless epiphytic orchid is significantly higher than that of a closely related leafy orchid. And for that reason, these kinds of orchids should never be potted up. Every millimeter of surface that has exposure to light is crucial for the survival unless it falls into the genre of leafless orchids that are terrestrial. <laughs> so we have an exception within an exception. God, I love the orchid hobby. Anyway, the terrestrial leafless orchids most definitely need to be potted up or put into the ground. Who would have thought we have just had a little crash course on solar panels and we've compared them to orchid leaves by way of photosynthesis. I hope that this made sense and with that, if you want to get away from deli containers or you are concerned about your roots covered in algae not being able to do their function efficiently or you love your decorative cash pots but feel guilty of denying your orchid roots the light to photosynthesize, well, hakuna matata. Enjoy your orchids in the most aesthetic presentation that makes you happy and proud. For our orchids that have leaves and structures, the capability of the roots being able to photosynthesize is so minute. It really makes no difference at all. However, one thing though, for solar panels to function efficiently, they need to be cleaned. Most of our modern day solar panels are self-cleaning. However, our orchid leaves have not evolved to that extent yet, so... Yes. <laughs> Give them the occasional wipe every once in a while so that they can function and photosynthesize to the max. Before I love and leave you though, I hope you found this video interesting and it gave you something to think about or better yet, peace of mind. It would be awesome if you could do the things that YouTube loves so much when it comes to a video. Please like, share and subscribe. I would also so appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, of course, if you have any questions or thoughts that you would like to add to this subject, could be a little bit controversial, please always feel free to express everything that you would like to add about this topic in the comments. And I would be so happy to continue the dialogue down there. All that is left for me to do now is wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care, bye.